This is a frozen thawed baby mouse, and today I had the great idea to feed it to my largest and most aggressive colony of ants. With 30 to 50,000 workers, they are always hungry for food. But is this baby mouse really a good option? Will the ants actually eat raw meat, or will this backfire terribly, leaving me with a smelly mouse and a colony of even more hungry ants that only want to escape? We'll soon find out, but before I let the feeding commence, let me show you what all has changed since the last video. Upon taking a look at the entire ant farm, we can see that compared to the last video from over two months ago, the colony now has two new nests and a giant secondary outworld. They've already started to fill up the new nest to max capacity, and the outworld is always swarming with thousands of workers. As usual, these ants continue to grow unbelievably fast, and with some brand new nests already on the way, they'll soon have even more room to expand. Now, as I said earlier, this colony is rather large, currently sitting at about 30 to 50k. This is amazing, however, it's not as fun when the ants keep trying to escape all the time. But these ants aren't just trying to escape to take over my house, they just want more food. And if they don't get their food when they want it, they will retaliate by flooding the outworld and wearing down the escape prevention barrier. It's already happened once with this outworld here. The ants completely run this outworld. I no longer can open it without risking a big escape. So I need to make sure that this doesn't ever happen again. But it's not as easy as you may think. When it comes to feeding pet ant colonies, it is important to have a variety of things to feed them. Ants, like us humans, can get bored of eating the same thing over and over again, so the ant keeper needs to switch up the meals every so often. I usually give this colony a variety of seeds, and while they do love their seeds, they also need protein. I've been giving this colony some mealworms recently, and as you may expect, they also love mealworms. Though, mealworms aren't going to cut it when it comes to exponential growth. I realize that the brood pile is actually rather small for the amount of workers that this colony has. At first, I was confused, but then it all made sense. I've mainly been feeding this colony a variety of seeds. And while seeds make up a large part of the colony's entire diet, the larvae and the queen seem to be more protein-driven. If the colony lacks protein, the queen will lay less eggs, and when the eggs do eventually hatch, there's not enough protein for them to consume, making the next generation of workers even smaller and less in numbers. Which brings me to my next point. These ants aren't just your average garden ant. They are a desert species of big-headed ant known as Fadolia rea. And as I'm sure you may have noticed, they happen to have both regular minor workers and relatively big major workers. My colony for some reason stopped producing these big majors, and at the size that they're at now, they should already have super majors, which from what I hear, are even bigger than the regular majors. So while it may seem like this colony is thriving, I'd say they're barely surviving, and it's completely my fault. They need more protein, and my solution was to give them something a little bit more meaty than what they've had recently. So without further delay, let's feed my colony of big-headed ants a baby mouse. In this bag is a frozen baby mouse, and oh no, wait, they're twins! Okay, well, it looks like we'll be feeding this colony two frozen baby mice. Anyways, because these mice are frozen, I need to thaw them out. So while they marinate in their little jacuzzi right here, I think it's time I give this outworld a proper cleanup. Using some tubing attached to this handheld vacuum cleaner, I can easily remove all of the trash which consists of dead ants and the past meals this colony has had, such as seeds and other bugs. I was going to remove this old nest here as well, but when the ants started to attack me, I decided to instead let them keep it. They deserved it. As the two mice continued to thaw out, I also decided to save any ants that unfortunately got sucked up inside the vacuum. To do this, I simply dumped out all of the ants and trash into this plastic basin here, and using a fan brush, I scooped up as many ants as I could and shook them off into their outworld. Any ants that were left behind received this tube of water, which they later congregated in, and using this opportunity of the ants all being in one space, I dumped them all back into their outworld as well. Around the same time, the mice had completely thawed out, and it would soon be time to feed them to my ant colony. To make this event even more interesting, I picked up this house on stilts, which for this video we'll call the tall dining hall, and I placed both baby mice on top. One was situated on the front porch by the spiraling staircase, and the other laid upon the roof. So with both of the baby mice now thawed out and prepared, it was time to feed my biggest ant colony ever. Upon placing in the tall dining hall, the ants below had immediately started to ascend. 
They climbed the spiral staircase with ease, and it wasn't long before the first ant came in contact with the first baby mouse. Soon after, more and more ants began to find the first baby mouse, with the second one just now being discovered. Watching as the ants began to form a well-established trail, I was left amazed by just how fast the word had spread. The ants in the nest were now sending reinforcements to help process the mice, and this is when I saw the very first major arrive at the scene. If you didn't already know, these major workers exist and have huge heads for a couple of main reasons. Reason number one, being to of course help defend the colony, and reason number two is so that they can use their big heads, which are mostly muscles to break open seeds, or in our case, to help tear the flesh off the baby mice. Both the majors and minors continued to swarm for several hours, but randomly and very unexpectedly, the swarming had dissipated, and I was now left both confused and scared as to what might be wrong. At first, I thought the ants might have been getting sick. The mice, after all, were raw and were also sitting in my freezer since late last year, which is when I first tried feeding this colony a baby mouse. But that suspicion was quickly thrown out the window when I later took a look at the time lapse I set on my phone a few hours prior. At regular time lapse speed, it's a little hard to tell, but when we speed it up even more, the problem I thought we once had wasn't actually all that bad. And in fact, the ants started to move one of the mice close to the stairs, which means that they definitely wanted to eat it. But you see, the ants only swarmed as much as they did in the beginning for one reason, and that's because the ants wanted to drink up all of the water that came with the mice after I had thawed them out. So with the water gone, most of the ants must have assumed that's all the mice had to offer. But for these ants that decided to stick around afterwards, they will soon be treated with possibly the best meal they've ever tasted. As time continued, so did the ants, and watching as they licked the skin of the mice made my skin crawl. It looked so weird, but at the same time, I couldn't look away. As the ants that stuck around began to break through the skin, more word was sent out, and even more reinforcements responded. There were now once again several hundred ants swarming both mice, and by the looks of these big soldiers here, they were about to get busy. Or so I thought. While some mages were pinching away at the mice, trying their best to break through the skin, others like this major worker here seemed to just be giving away free piggyback rides. I guess if you're an ant, there's no shame in having some fun at work. So while some of the ants were messing around with each other, others were taking their job a little too seriously. This major seemed to be having some special feeling towards toads. I don't know man, this ant seems to have some sort of weird foot fetish or something. Bruh, it's literally nibbling on the toes. At this point, I think the minor workers are doing more work than the majors, which made absolutely no sense until I remembered the major's original job. For a little while before all this, the colony had been consuming a lot of seeds, but in order to do so, they needed majors to help break the seed casings off. As a major worker, if you do this for long enough, your mandibles or jaws will be worn down, making them less effective over time. So this toe biter was honestly doing as much as it could with whatever she had left. It's sort of sad to see that these ants literally work themselves to death just so that the colony as a whole can continue to grow. But speaking of ants working, I noticed something else interesting with the ants and the mice. Compared to earlier, the ants seemed to have removed a lot of skin. There were now huge chunks of mouse skin just gone. I'm also pretty sure at this point, the ants have made their way inside both of the mice and are just eating them from the inside out. They kept removing skin and organs overnight, but as I grew tired, the ants worked overtime. And when I had awakened the next morning, this is what I saw. The ants were now finishing up both mice. They were unrecognizable at this point, and with most of the mice already removed, what was left happened to be light enough for the ants to pick up and drag back to the nest. Speaking of which, I wonder how the ants in the nest are reacting to the mice they just received. Okay, to be completely honest here, I'm almost 100% sure that all the mice are inside of all of the baby ant stomachs right now, which is why we can't see any large mice chunks anywhere inside the nest. Though I did spot these little pink blobs here, which I can only assume are mice guts that had yet to be fed to the larvae and the queen. And yes, I'm sure you would love to see the queen at this point, but there are now so many ants at this point, I don't even know where she is anymore. Though, if you really do want to see her, you should check out my last video where I had to kidnap the queen. That's all for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.